New London, Connecticut. We've got Kat Shannon coming up. And are you there, Kat? I am. Hello. Hello, there she is. How, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you. How are you? All right. Awesome. Um, I'm doing pretty good. This is uh, starting out to be a really good blessing of an evening here. So um, now I'm looking at your bio here and I see uh, it, normally on Red's room, pretty much everything has normally been music, 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 and occasional like a pastor will give a short message and then more music, music, music. But you are going to change it up today, aren't you? I am because y'all do not want to hear me sing. <laughs> it's joyful noise. <laughs> well, uh, well. Well, let me, yeah. so what are you going to do instead? I already know the answer, but I'm going to let you tell folks. I'm going to be sharing some spoken word poetry. All righty. So now just before you start, just real briefly, um, tell me um, what, what, what's drew you into doing spoken word and, you know, you know, what, what are the, what, what are the motivations behind it? The things that, that kind of light your passion on it. Well, I've always been a writer. Um, you know, I went to school, I went to college for writing English and creative writing, and I wrote mm. fiction short stories. And when I, after I gave my life to Christ, one night at one of my jobs, I work at a college, we had a spoken word artist come in and the way he spoke and the way he was on fire for the Lord, it just lit a flame within me. Mm. And I remember saying, Lord, I want to write like that. I want to, I want to do that. And okay. that night oh, cool. I started writing. And ever since then, it's all been, you know, for God's glory. And I'm so grateful for the opportunity. Okay. So, um, well, for lack of better thing to do, that, that's, that's, that sounds like a pretty convincing explanation to me. Uh, why don't I just let you get started with your first piece here? Sure. You, yeah, can, so the, you can give us a little, uh, you know, description of what it's about if you need to or whatever, whatever works. Sure. Um, this first one is actually, I think the second one I ever wrote, second or third. And it actually, I started writing it right around the time of the pandemic, when the pandemic hit. It just truly made me realize how I am not in control. <laughs> And that God is in control and he is sovereign. And it just, it just, he gave me this. And so I wanted to share it tonight. So I call this one beautiful chaos. Chaos can be beautiful. Let me tell you why. You ever been so low, you catch yourself looking up to the sky, wondering if there's really someone looking down from up high? And if there is, why is there so much chaos down here? Why is there pestilence, uncertainty, and fear? It can make us feel like everything is falling apart. You know, kind of like you running into every item dropped in Mario Kart, falling behind, left in the dust of chaos, feeling like the flow is no gain and all loss. Then your world comes to a screeching halt. Thoughts flashing through your head saying you're never enough and always at fault. This chaos can actually be disguised as a brand new start, an opportunity to have a change in heart, to bring awareness about what really matters, the purpose of this life and your part, that we're not alone, no. You weren't created to be glued to your phone or to have a big home. You weren't created to collect wealth or just focus on yours and yourself. You were created for a godly relationship. I know this is where some of y'all are going to dip. You think I'm on some crazy trip, but I pray that your eyes would open, those ears become clear so you can really hear. I pray that your hearts would soften and that your minds would begin to shift. Some of y'all might continue to drift, but if you can take just one thing away from all that I've got to say, Jesus has got nothing but love for you. You won't find another fact more true. He knows all about you. Every doubt 
and every fear. He's not blind, but he's seen every tear. He is the life, the truth, and the way, and he has new mercies for his children every day. He wants you to come to him just as you are. Bring him all that anxiety, illness, pain, every scar. All right, now I'm sure you're rolling your eyes. It's okay. I'm confident you'll start to see the lies. You might be wondering how I know. Well, I remember where I used to be before Jesus saved a wretch like me. I was blind, but now I see. Bound by guilt, smoke, alcohol, and lies, he set me free. We were never qualified to fill that void inside. Trust me, I've tried. Tried to keep up with this world's trends. They all lead to literal dead ends. Chaos can be beautiful because although it harms, it can also bring us into Jesus's arms. And once you're there, I know you'll find hope and peace. Through any storm, trial, or tribulation, his love won't cease. You ever been so low, you catch yourself looking up to the sky? Well, if you didn't know before, now you know why. Thank you. Yay! Uh, very cool, very cool. Very good, great message too. Um, now, 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 Kat, I'm curious now. Um, it, it, it's fascinating, as I'm listening, I'm thinking of the difference between how you craft words for spoken versus something that's constrained into the rhythmic uh, flow of a song. It sounds like you probably have more latitude to be free form, am I wrong? Or am no, I right, or? You're, yeah, you're not wrong. I, I think yeah. you're right. It's, you know, I've heard a lot of different things about like kind of the way that I write and I remember saying that I didn't really feel like a true spoken word artist because I, when I heard spoken word, I, I heard different types of spoken word and this is just my type of it. I think it's like a combination yeah. um, kind of between like the poetry and, and almost like rap, but I'm not a rapper. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. And I saw you were doing some rhyming, but you weren't absolutely bound to it. You didn't absolutely have to make something rhyme if you didn't want to, right? Correct, yeah. Yeah. It, 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 that kind of reminds me of uh, there was a songwriting style of John Anderson, who was the lead singer of Yes, and he would write these real ethereal, you know, kind of fluffy lyrics and stuff. And he would take great liberties with the English language and, and grammatical usages and how things flowed and stuff didn't always rhyme and it didn't have to and it just sort mm -hmm. of worked. Um, I, I see kind of that same quality happens here. Yeah. That's awesome. I've never heard yeah. of him, but I have to check that out. That's neat. Well, I know. that's okay. You don't have to hurt. He, he was from, from back in the 70s. And, <laughs> um, but, uh, by the way, um, there's some very positive comments in Facebook. I don't, don't want to take too much time to read them, but people are really enjoying it. So why don't I let you uh, um, jump in for your next piece here? Go ahead. Sure, absolutely. So um, the next one I'm going to share is just this one was, God gave me this one and it's such a blessing because it just truly reminds me where I used to be and who I was before I knew Christ. You know, I struggled with social anxiety, generalized anxiety, depression, alcohol, cigarettes, and weed. And I used all of these things to just numb myself because I wanted to get out of my head. I didn't really want to be in reality, but I was truly high functioning. So nobody really knew what was going on um, and how bad it really had gotten for me. So this one just speaks to God's glory and what he can do, no matter what you are facing, no matter what mental health struggles you might have, God is sovereign. God is in control and he's above it all. So I call this one mental vacation. You ever just want to leave your mind? I'm talking like a vacation. Or maybe it's a more serious altercation. File for a divorce or a restraining order. Saying, I can no longer be your porter. It's one thing to carry all these thoughts, but you never let me put them down. Each one holding more weight 
wondering if I'm going to drown. What if you took a seat with your mind and said, listen, we just aren't working out. You fill me with too much doubt and anxiety about who I am and who I want to be. And I just want to be free. I need some peace of mind. And you make that really hard to find. Maybe we just need some space because with you, life is getting too hard to face. Making me second guess my every move, your constant criticism I've tried to reprove, but these negative thoughts are getting harder to remove. It's easier to give in and believe what they say or sometimes hope for tomorrow to be a better day, only to be disappointed time and time again. I don't feel the same when I pray and say amen. Doesn't the Lord have the pen? And if he does, why is he writing my story like this? I want out of my head and to have just a shred of bliss. I can't live with the thoughts and memories you keep shoving in my face. So these thoughts and memories, I'm going to erase. I'm going on that vacation. These substances can be my new foundation. They'll relieve me of all the frustration. I don't want to overthink. So I'll just have another drink. If I fall into another mental pit, I'll just take another hit. I won't stay here long, just for a little bit. And in the middle of the path, I sit, band-aids over broken bones. Been out of money, but I keep taking out loans. Desiring something deeper, but stuck like endless skipping stones. Gliding on the surface, not sure when I'll plunge into the deep. When really, I've just fallen asleep. It's only fitting, because whatever I've sowed, I'll reap. And yes, the Lord does have the pen, but I keep stealing it over and over again, scrolling through others' thoughts and perceptions, counting all the ways I fall short of perfection, made me book a one-way ticket, a red eye to destruction. I didn't realize when I gave my life to Christ, I'd be under construction. I let the enemy play me like percussion, striking me with doubt and temptation. I've never felt this level of hesitation setting me up on a blind date with my sinful nature and have me believe in this gotta be fate. The Lord never said all this would be easy, but being sober got me feeling queasy. All the hurt and trauma begins floating to the surface, but listen up. He's calling you to a greater purpose. He has plans to prosper you with no intent to harm. All the plans the enemy has, your heavenly father can disarm. He says not one weapon formed against you shall prosper. And if you've given your life to Christ, you better believe you're on that roster. Don't let the enemy convince you that you're an imposter because the enemy is crouching among us and he's very sus. He'll tell you the Lord no longer wants anything to do with us. Misery loves company. He's called the father of lies for a reason. He was thrown out of heaven on some treason. I said, the Lord has plans, providing hope and a future. Addiction, pain, mental health, fear. I'm trying to tell you that Jesus is the suture. I haven't made myself clear. A mental vacation isn't going to solve our current situation. It's really just avoiding an internal altercation. If you've tried to leave your mind or put an end to using, but feel inept. Remember, healing will be uncomfortable. Take it one day at a time, step by step. When I gave my life to Christ, he didn't change me in a day. Nah, he don't work that way. The Holy Spirit has shaped and molded me over time, and I'd often find that I'd get selfish and run back to sin like a VHS on rewind. But each time I fell, I was met with patience and grace. In the midst of this race, you gotta let the Holy Spirit keep you on pace. If you are at your lowest point and you think you've tried everything to get through, just cry out to Jesus, repent for your sins, surrender it all to him because his word says that all things that are old shall become new. Thank you. Awesome. Very powerful. Now, 
<clears throat> I got to pick your brain about this now a little bit because this this particular piece it touched on uh, addiction issues and uh, mental health issues, and those are near and dear to my heart because our the, the band that I play in we do a lot of uh, Christian recovery programs, and I've come to the c- conclusion. Um, it, well, actually, and also, um, <clears throat> we don't play at CRs, but, but, you know, several of us go and attend CRs too, just to work on stuff, you know, celebrate recoveries. And I have come to the conclusion that the most authentic Christians there is are the ones who are in these recovery programs and CR programs and who are fighting the, the battle every single day. And they're coming there to get their support, but in the in the in they're leaning on Christ. So, what, what what say you about all that? I would totally agree with you. Not just because I'm in all of those types of programs, but because I think, like, especially with Celebrate Recovery, you know, it talks about how it's habits, hurts, and hangups that you know keep us for an right. arm's length from the Lord. And I think you know people just think of celebrate recovery when they hear the word recovery they think drugs and alcohol but really recovery you know i i went there right. to CR because I, I had a problem with my drinking with alcohol i'm a recovering alcoholic but i found out that i also struggle with codependency that's an addiction to people you know or others who have right. food addictions or others who had you know um just various addictions it doesn't just have to be drugs and alcohol so I just, um, I yeah. think that uh, anger, you know, anything. <clears throat> so I just think that celebrate recovery really could be for anyone because we're all the churches for the sick. We're, we're all recovering and we're, we're in desperate need of the Lord of Jesus. So it's my thoughts. Yeah. I, I love that thought. I love that thought for a couple of reasons. Uh, n- number one that, yeah, a, a lot going through this broken world. Uh, it, it is inevitable that you, there's no way you can go through it without getting bruised um you, you know so and yes yeah, cr is interesting now it's some of the other higher power oriented ones they've got a little different format and they're mostly about people who have you know either drug or alcohol addiction of some sort mostly that but as you say cr focuses m- more on a broader umbrella of things and it includes things that aren't technically an addiction but right. there's still something where emotionally we've been injured you know, and we need God's grace to heal us and help us rewire the way we think. And Amen. Um, you put it beautifully. It, yeah. So I was, you know, just as a quick side note, um, there's a book I've been reading, um, and I was actually recommended to read this. Um, uh, it's called The Body Keeps the Score. And it, it, it's a secular book, but it's written by a very important researcher in that field. You know, a guy who for decades has been on the cutting edge of the research and he talks a lot about, uh, you know, PTSD and emotional trauma injuries. And, and, you know, I just went away with that thing, you know, just being very deeply stirred and moved by, you know, just how much this broken world can just break us on the inside, mm-hmm. you know, and, and we really need God's grace uh, sometimes to, to help us heal that. Absolutely. And brothers and sisters in Christ, who we often meet in these programs who have gone through the same thing or are going through something similar. That's how God shows his love and his grace through, through others as well. Yeah. And and I I also like the one thing you mentioned that really um, there, there's a lot of times in the church, there's kind of an us versus them mentality where there's a lot of folks sitting in the pews and they're kind of putting on the facade that they're squeaky clean and it's like, yeah, I don't need that kind of stuff. You know, we've got it together. Those other messed up people, you know, kind of there's just us versus them thinking. Um, but there's one of two things where they're mistaken. Either number one, there but for the grace of God goes them. And they could have, you know, easily fallen into some of those traps and struggles. And number two, a lot of them are just in denial because really they would benefit from going and joining CR themselves. And I, I think a lot of people sitting in the pews um don't realize how cr could hurt could really help them um you know <clears throat> i totally and agree. you know make their domestic lives personal lives better you know absolutely i say and that it's all about christ at the center you know it, it you know it's it's not like secular psychobabble it's really christ-centered so i love that so you got one more piece to, you want to share with us correct yeah i just want to be respectful of your time so i can be all set and no. 
Yeah, it, it's all good. Let's do one more. All right, sure. So I call this one blissful ignorance. Technology makes us think we can relate as easy as we self-medicate with the smoke that fills our lungs, desperately climbing the rungs of this ladder when really these substances just making us sadder, creating a void that we can't fill, not with any pill or any bottle. We try to remodel, swiping right, hoping for Mr. Right, late at night, posting pictures and writing a caption, thinking it will give us satisfaction for the likes, for a follow. Where does the time go as we endlessly scroll? It takes a toll on our mental state while we believe it will alleviate that subtle loneliness or self-hate. Comparing our lives to the ones we see, feeling like we'll never be where we wanna be. And even when we feel secure, it can plant a seed that isn't pure. It takes root in your self-confidence, your self-worth to the point you could be questioning your existence here on this earth wanting to be seen, to be known, but feeling invisible. It's really almost criminal how they've made social media irresistible, the outcome of their influence unpredictable, their ethics unequivocal, thieves of our time, subconsciously waiting for our phones to chime. Now that's a fact. They've been stealing our ability to interact. It's really a trap, just like a map that's been missing the key. Don't y'all see? I'm talking about you and me. We hide behind our phones saying, please leave a message at the tone. Not because we want to be alone. We actually hunger to be known, but it makes us lose touch with reality. Like astronauts floating in zero gravity, we float through this life unaware of all that's out there. Feeling like the isolation's too much to bear but I can promise you that Jesus is always there. Yet we compromise our sanity to exercise our vanity, physically present, but mentally captivated, depression and anxiety activated, whether we know it or not, lost in a sea of memes, missing out on everyday common themes and opportunities to connect. We'd rather neglect, well, I'd rather infect others. Hold up, wait, get COVID out of your head. Listen again to what I said. I'd rather infect others with kindness. Let's put our assumptions and judgments behind us. Train your minds to be aware, to not get caught in the snare. Beware of the addiction we all live in blissful ignorance of and consciously choose to put down the phone and show each other love. Thank you. Awesome. Thank Yay. you so much. Very Some welcome. Beautiful, beautiful messages there. And like, like I said before, people in Facebook are really, um, they're really commenting uh, very positively. They appreciate um, a lot of it and, and are blessed by it. Ladies and gentlemen, give some love and appreciation for Kat Shannon all the way from Connecticut. Connecticut. <laughs> yes, glory be to God. Thank you so much. All righty. That's so cool. Um, your contact information and where people can get your material, of course, you know, as always, put that in the comments and uh, we'll make sure that gets out to the Facebook comments for you, too. Okay. All righty. Thank you.